This is a demonstration of how to test a RESTful web service using SOAP UI. I'm featuring the SOAP UI free version in this video. There's a pro version and if you use a lot of SOAP UI, you may want to go for those extra features. I have a RESTful web service running in Tomcat and there is a WAR called demo-rest.war. There's some path information and the last part of the path is a variable. So I can put a name in it or some characters and the characters come back after being consulted on the server side. Uh, what that looks like in Java terms is in this JAX RS code here, there is a path containing a hello, a path containing an echo, and then added onto that echo part is a, is a variable parameter, a, a path parameter. And using JAX RS, that can find its way into a Java method. Now what is returned is a string of type text plane, and that's what we're seeing in the browser here. So I can, I can vary the path parameter and get those results back. Now what that looks like in SOAP UI is I first create a new project. I'm going to call this project Echo Project. And it covers SOAP-based web services. We'll be using a RESTful web service in this case. And for my endpoint, what I do is I'm going to put the URL that I was testing in my browser. That's a fully qualified path to the servlet plus any additional path annotations in, in Java terms. And I'm going to end it with a parameter. Now this curly braces is a syntax. And that's a cue to this extract resource method function here. And when I press OK, it's able to parse out that param. It calls it a template, which is another word for a path parameter. And I press OK. Now I'm, I'm going to define a rest method. I only have a get defined in my, um, in my JAX RS code and I have a method. And if I run it, you'll see that the param gets echoed back. Look at my path here. There's the demo rest URL, the extra path information, followed by the path variable. Now that's the general uh, interface. The next thing I want to do is create a test suite. So I create a test suite. and create a new test case. And after selecting the rest icon, I'm prompted to add one of my requests here. So I'll put in this request. Now you can see a very similar dialogue popping up into this test case. This is the specific test case. This is a more general definition here. You can see the I for interface and then there's the test suite here. Now, I, so I put in a value, I'll put in a lowercase CW. You can see my URL now is CW and I'm going to look for some XML with a CW echoed back into it. And you can see that's, that's the case here. So we've got essentially what I was testing in the browser. Now where you start to see some, some process improvement is I can go around and, and turn this test case, I can clone it, and I'm going to change the case up here. And in this case, I've got the same request, same endpoint and everything, but I'm going to add in a different value. Okay, and you can see that Carl is added over here in the XML. So really easily we're doing the same kinds of things with the browser except when I call up the test suite I'm able to run all of these things here. Now there's a whole bunch of exit criteria that you can define as far as insertions go. You can do like an XPath match and what I'll do is define a um, data selected from current and you can see that it puts that value in there and what that means is as I run this my assertion is tested that that in fact is the case. So unlike the browser you've got a whole bunch of requests that can be queued up here and run on demand so it automates a lot of the, the manual testing. <laughs>